Hello and welcome to Nominal Rate. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. In this short video, we'll talk about how and when to use the nominal function and how it helps you set up more accurate workbooks. And don't miss exercise three because we'll use it to figure out how to reach your financial goals. Now, let's head to the first exercise, exercise one. The nominal function converts an effective rate into a nominal rate. This is basically the opposite of the effect function that we discussed in a prior video. What's the difference between these two rates? The nominal rate is the the stated rate, the annual percentage rate. The effective rate simply accounts for compounding. This is often expressed as an APY, annual percentage yield. So time out, what's compounding? Compounding simply means that interest is earned on previously earned interest. It's a beautiful thing. So what kind of rate do other finance functions like the payment function use? It uses a periodic rate. The periodic rate is simply the nominal rate divided by the number of periods. And that's why this nominal function becomes so useful because it helps us translate what might be advertised into what is used by the other financial functions. For example, let's say you see an advertised rate APY of 3.5%. This might be for some type of CD or certificate of deposit. That 3.5% accounts for compounding. But if we wanna get it to the nominal or stated rate, how do we do that? Well, we can use the nominal function equals nominal and we pass it two arguments. The first argument is the effective rate. That's what's found in cell E10, comma. The second argument is the number of periods. This is referring to the number of compounding periods per year. So if this CD is compounded monthly, we would enter 12. If it's compounded daily, we would enter 365 close function and enter. So what this is saying is that the bank is paying a nominal rate of 3.44%, but once you factor in compounding, you'll earn the equivalent of 3.5%. So how does the nominal function relate to the effect function? It's simply the opposite. So if I wanted to convert a nominal rate into an effective rate, I could use the effect function equals effect. Here we pass it the nominal rate in E11 and the number of periods, in this case, 365, close function and enter. And as expected, it's 3.5%. The nominal function and the effect function are basically the opposites. Now that we're warmed up, let's head to the next exercise, exercise two. Here we're gonna try to calculate our future goal or the future savings total given a monthly savings amount. In other words, given a monthly savings amount, what's that gonna add up to over time? So here we're gonna save 300 a month for 10 years and the high yield savings APY is 5.12%. We know Excel has a future value function as discussed in a previous video. The first argument is rate, but that's the periodic rate. And the periodic rate is the nominal rate divided by the number of periods. Since the bank advertises the annual percentage yield, APY, we need to first convert that into the nominal rate. And that's where the nominal function comes in handy. Equals nominal. The effective rate is the value here in C9. And this compounds daily, so our number of periods per year is 365. Close function and enter. Now we have a nominal rate that we can use as the basis in many other Excel finance functions, like the future value function, equals FV, future value. Here the rate is the periodic rate. That's gonna be our nominal rate divided by 12. And we divide this by 12 because that's how much we're saving each month. In other words, we're making a contribution 12 times per year. Comma, the second argument is the number of periods. As a note, the future value function, along with other Excel finance functions, assumes that the interest is compounded with the same period we use here. In other words, if we use monthly periods, it's gonna assume that interest is compounded monthly. And in actuality, with this investment, interest is compounded daily. So what that means is this won't be exactly precise it'll be conservative, meaning we'll actually earn a bit more. But over a 10 year period, we know this interest rate is gonna fluctuate anyways, so we already know this is basically an estimate. So the number of periods is the number of years here in C8 times 12, comma. The next argument is payment. That's our monthly payment amount, and that's gonna be the value here in C7. Optionally, we could specify the next argument, which is the present value, which is our starting point. Here we're starting with zero, so we'll just leave it out. Close function and enter. Here we see that if we save $300 a month for 10 years at an annual percentage yield of 5.12% or a nominal rate of 4.99%, we expect that balance to be about $46,569. Again, that's just an estimate due to the factors 
we discussed. You're also going to note that since the monthly amount of 300 was entered as a positive number, the future value is expressed as a negative number. That's simply because these finance functions operate on a cash flow basis, where outflows are negative numbers and inflows are positive numbers. I could easily flip the sign here by using a leading dash and enter. So, if we know the monthly payment, this is how we calculate the future value. What if we need to calculate the opposite? In other words, what if we want to calculate our future goal and back into how much per month we need to save? Well, that takes us to the next exercise, exercise three. So we'd like to have $100,000 in 10 years. We'll assume an APY of 5.12% compounded daily. To compute the monthly savings amount, we'll use the PMT function, but once again, it requires a rate argument that's the periodic rate. The periodic rate is the nominal rate divided by the number of periods. That means we need to use the nominal function to convert the APY into the nominal rate equals nominal. The effective rate is this, and the number of compounding periods per year is 365. Close function and enter. Here we see that the nominal rate is 4.99%. Now let's calculate how much we need to save every month in order to save $100,000. Equals, and we're gonna use the PMT function. The rate is the nominal rate divided by 12, since we wanna calculate the monthly payment, comma, the number of periods is the number of years and once again, this needs to be expressed in months, so we'll multiply it by 12, comma. The present value is how much we're starting with. We're gonna assume zero, comma, and the future value is our amount stored in C7. And once again, this is really an estimate. First of all, this savings account actually compounds interest daily, and this function assumes monthly. And second of all, this rate is gonna fluctuate over the next 10 years. Close function and enter. Once again, this is expressed as a negative, and once again, we can flip the sign with a leading dash. So this is telling us that we need to save about $644 per month to hit $100,000 in 10 years. So that's how we can use the nominal function to convert the advertised APY into a nominal rate. Doing this enables us to calculate the periodic rate that's used in so many other Excel finance functions. Hopefully this has been helpful. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. This video is a production of Excel University.